Hello, my name is Guillermo Gallego, and in this video, I will take a look at the differences between a frame-based camera and an event-based camera from a sampling point of view. It will still be high level. So a good reference for this is this paper on IEEE Spectrum that is called Giving Machines Human-like Eyes. And just to set up uh, where we are, we, we have a camera, and the camera has a chip. And this chip, if we zoom in, it has some pixels. In the case of an event camera, the pixels have two parts. One is the, the photodiode that converts light into voltage. And then the rest of the pixel uh, detects relative intensity changes. So that now, if we input uh, the camera is viewing a scene like this one, then the output that we see in the pixels is something like this. So here in orange, what is represented is the light that arrives at a single pixel, in this case, this pixel. And um, this signal, orange, is converted into a sequence or a stream of events, right? Some of them are positive, some of them are negative. The positive uh, indicate that there was a brightness increase and the negative indicate there was a brightness decrease. And because this is only for one pixel, to visualize this for all pixels is a bit difficult. So what we do is that we uh, bin the events in the last few milliseconds and we represent it with an image. And that's what this image uh, shows. So gray means that there was no event in the last few milliseconds at that pixel. White means that there was a brightness increase at those pixels, and black means there was a brightness decrease. And so as you can see, again, these event cameras are mostly detecting uh, moving edges on the scene, either due to an object or to shadow. So a nice way to uh, better understand how an event camera works compared to a standard camera is uh, just taking a look at, uh, at the toy example, such as uh, the dot on the spin, spinning disc, or the tennis player, or in this case, the, the golfer. This is a, an example by um, the company Prophecy. So imagine we are viewing this scene, and um, what we color here are different pixels in the camera. So the pixels that are marked as pink is such as the, the sky, the grass, and the trees. They In these pixels, the intensity changes slowly. So if we use a standard uh, sampling rate, a standard camera that will acquire an image, I don't know, 25 times per second, um, well, all these pixels are being oversampled. This is redundant information. We don't need to be remembered 25 times per second that the sky is blue, right? Then there are also pixels in the image, such as the ones at the golfer and the club and the ball, whose uh, intensity changes much faster. And these pixels are under sampled with the standard camera. It means that the camera is not acquiring information as fast as it's needed and therefore we are missing visual information. In contrast, an event-based camera, uh, it's acquiring visual information uh, naturally based on the scene dynamic. It means, it means that um, every pixel uh, adjusts uh, its sampling rate, we have to say, uh, to the dynamic scene that it's visualizing. So frame-based cameras, they sample the scene based on an external clock, such as 25 frames per second, whereas event-based cameras, they sample the scene based on how intensity evolves at each pixel. So there is no external clock. The way to sample the scene is based on how the intensity changes at the pixel. And this is an example of a frame-based sampling where we can see the different snapshots where the frames were acquired. If we superimpose all of them, then we see the individual frames, but we lost all the information uh, in between them, whereas this doesn't happen with an event-based camera. This is the actual output from uh, an event camera in slow motion, and this is a Selex camera. On the left, we see the output of a standard camera, 
and on the right we see that the pixels that are mostly triggering information are the ones that move uh, due to moving edges, right? So either shadows or moving objects, such as the, the club, the ball, and the shadows. So from a sampling viewpoint, um, traditional sampling is how frame-based cameras work, right? And they take samples uh, at a constant rate. So there is a sampling rate, F, that is given by the inverse of some sampling interval, capital T. And a sample is acquired uh, at each of these sampling uh, times, which are multiples of some sampling interval T. So these are the samples, L at time TK. And this works, uh, this is how um, usual video cameras and uh, uh, audio recorders work, right? They take several samples per second. In the case of uh, video, it's, I don't know, 25 samples per second. In the case of audio, it could be uh, thousands of samples per second. Instead, uh, event-based cameras uh, work in a different way. The sampling is more cl um, closer to what is called uh, cross-level sampling. And instead of being equispaced in time, uh, sampling is equispaced in range or in intensity. So we say that a sample or an event is obtained when the signal change exceeds, exceeds a predefined value C. So that's given by this equation. If the intensity at the current time minus the intensity at the previous time that an event was triggered is bigger than C, which we see represented here, then an event will be generated. So this was the previous event happening at T minus delta TK. And then the signal, the brightness signal evolved, and at some point it crossed this uh, value C. So there was a brightness decrease of amount C. Um, therefore, here an event is generated, and delta TK is the time elapsed since the last samples in the last event. Um, so on and off events, so both different and negative events are here represented with different colors. What happens in the next sample? Well, in the next sample, now the delta TK is much smaller because the brightness is decreasing fast. And therefore, um, the two times, the one at the previous sample and the one at the new sample, a new event, they are different. So information is encoded in these delta t k's. So this is one way to look at uh, event-based cameras performing a different type of sampling. Instead of sampling uniformly in time, which is the horizontal axis, event cameras are sampling uniformly in range, which is the vertical axis. And if we continue, then we see the different the rest of the of the samples. Red means that there was a brightness decrease, and blue the means that there was a brightness increase. It's important to note that um, this sampling is something that happens uh, uh, at the sensor really early. It's not something that happens once you have acquired an image. There is no such thing as an image. So a pen based data, it's asynchronous. And although it measures brightness increments, or is not the same as the brightness increments that you would get by subtracting two frames. And that's what I've tried to show in this plot. So on the top left, uh, you see the image, grayscale image acquired by a standard camera. And you see a building, a road, forget about this middle circle and the red line and, and a tree, maybe a bit of our exposure. So this frame is a frame from the Davis 240 and it has a limited range of 55 dBs. That's it's not the important thing here. And on the right, we see the events from the same scene acquired by the event camera. You can distinguish the building on the right and the tree on the left. And this image is obtained by binning the events. So we took the events in the last 50 milliseconds and we plotted them as an image. 
where grayscale means that there was no event, bright means that there were positive events, and black means there were negative events. So brightness increase or brightness decrease. Now this artificial frame is not the same as the frame that you would obtain from subtracting uh, two different frames, mostly because the, the sensors have um, a different dynamic range. Right, so the event camera has a very high dynamic range, and therefore you can see in these overexposed areas, uh, you can see the tree, whereas this information is already washed out in the frame and subtracting the previous frame from this one, which gives this uh, intermediate image, it will not uh, show um, the tree because uh, information was, was already lost. In any case, it's also not the same because frames and they have a global exposure so they suffer from motion blur which is something that you see here on the right so there is some motion blur whereas with events this is not the case uh, events the, the boundaries are, are sharp so events are not the same as uh, difference of two grayscale frames Okay, so some references. This is the, the paper uh, that mostly emphasizes this sampling principle of event cameras, giving machines human-like eyes. And if you want to know more about how to simulate this, well, there is this uh, paper uh, by Mugler et al., the event camera dataset and simulator, simulator. And a more refined version of the simulator is in this paper, eSIM, uh, from Cole 2018. Thank you very much.